Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Tranquility Du Jour, nourishing conversations about living a full and meaningful life with doses of tranquility. This is episode 569. I'm your host, Kimberly Wilson, bringing you tranquility through this medium since 2005. Today, I'm talking about simplification. So again, pulling from my book, Year of Tranquility, which is the model that we use for the upcoming annual program, and we use this year too. Um, This new program is going to be called the Coterie, and um, you can join the wait list for that over in the show notes, KimberlyWilson.com slash 569. And, you know, I just find like there's so much juicy material in here that, and I also heard from some of you that you really like the Managing Resources um, podcast from last week. So I thought, well, let me take this a little bit deeper because these are all from the minimalism chapter, which is, I think it's May that this happens. But anyway, if you start in January um, through this book, but I just thought it would be helpful to kind of think about, right, holiday season, it's always so hectic. And how can we do a little simplification, especially after we've done a little thinking about managing our resources of time, money, and energy? Again, I hope that was helpful for you last week. And it is something that we really, really want to protect. I have to say, I was having tea with a friend yesterday at La Durée, my favorite place, after uh, going to see the Nutcracker at the Kennedy Center, which was just such a treat. And anyway, she said to me, you know, she she was like, I have to tell you, one time, and this was probably eight years ago, um, you set a boundary. And I have, it's really stuck with me. And I've shared it with a lot of people and kind of nudged them to do the same. And it was an innocent thing. She reached out and was like, hey, you know, I have a friend who is interested in yoga. It was something along those lines. You know, would you be willing to talk to her? And, you know, my response was, because, you know, we all get a lot of these, right? Like, oh, I think you and -and so-and-so would, you know, have a lot in common. You know, can I connect you or things like that? Or can you help so-and-so with their book proposal? I don't know, whatever it might be. And, you know, I think as women and people pleasers, we're often thinking, of course, you know, of course, yeah, you know, I'm happy to, um, or, you know, you feel like you have to, right? And so, you know, I said to her, uh, you know, and for, I, I think I said something along the lines of like, is there anything in particular that you think I would be helpful with? I, I don't really have time, but if it's really important to you, I can make the time. I just need to know a little bit more about what you envision like that she that she needs that I can help support with, right? So rather than just saying, of course, yeah, give her my email address, kind of setting a boundary around it. Anyway, she that's really stuck with her. And she said that in turn, she's tried to be better about um, encouraging others to do the same and not just automatically assuming, oh, so-and-so knows this topic, let me connect it to. And again, you know, it's a small thing, but as we think about our resources of time, energy, money, it's like, okay, how can I begin saying no and really protect my own boundaries as we move, particularly into the holiday season. It's like, oh, can you bake, you know, holiday cookies for the, you know, your child's classroom? Or can you sign up for this volunteer opportunity? I mean, it's always like good stuff, right? But you just may not have the capacity and that is okay. All right. So we're going to be talking, of course, about simplification. I have five tips for it, but I also want to mention that on Saturday, I'm holding a free holiday pop-up, and it's a virtual event. I did this last December, and we're going to be doing some journaling and some planning and kind of looking ahead. I will also be sharing a sneak peek and lots of scoop on my upcoming program, The Coterie, and would love, love, love to have you kind of join us and tune in for this. Now, if you cannot join us live, no worries, you will get the replay. And um, again, you can sign up for this over at KimberlyWilson.com. Also, if you go to uh, the show notes for this episode, it's there. 
And then also, if you uh, go to Instagram, you know, there, it's featured in my, um, in my link there. So just a few ways. So the, the piece about Saturday, again, that I wanted to share is we're going to be doing probably about 45-ish minutes of journaling and reflecting, of course, and then a little bit of planning. And I will be telling you about the coterie. Now, the coterie, just a few kind of ideas around this, is it's going to include a monthly workshop to kick off the month's Year of Tranquility theme, right? So right now I'm reading to you a bit from Minimalism and to connect as a community. Um, you're also going to have an optional mid year in-person gathering, Chamois in D.C., uh, monthly co-creating sessions where we get together and we really just have our heads down for two 25-minute sessions, a celebratory virtual retreat, a celebratory welcome soiree on the afternoon of New Year's Eve, four seasonal virtual retreats starting with New Year's Day, a private resource library that includes Year of Tranquility and Daybook PDFs and more, a private community on Mighty Networks, snail mail, which is like many people's favorite thing, um, optional accountability buddies, a few guest teachers, and a beautiful, beautiful workbook, kind of tying it all together in one beautiful piece. So that just gives you a little peek into what's coming with the Coterie and the holiday pop-up. And you can join the waitlist for the program where you're going to get a little inside scoop before Saturday over at KimberlyWilson.com slash 2021. All right. And that's where you can find the waitlist for that. And there will be a new web page for it and all that wonderful stuff as the program launches next week. Now, anyone dealing with pet loss, I want to invite you to a free event happening on December 14th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and there's a link to join in the show notes. Again, KimberlyWilson.com slash 569. And then the New Year's virtual retreat. So this is happening January 1st from 2 to 4 p.m. So from 2 to 4 p.m., we will be live. But the virtual retreat also includes a one-hour pre-recorded yoga and mindfulness video for you to do before we begin. However, if you would rather do it after the virtual retreat, that's fine too, and you can do it over and over again. I've decided to shorten the virtual retreats because I just find that spending so much time online, of course, there's a lot of fatigue around it, and I feel like I, I will be able to get all the programming in from two to four because that's typically where the kind of reflection and creativity pieces, you know, and kind of teaching pieces were all within those two hours. And the additional hour was yoga and mindfulness. And so I'm going to have that pre-recorded for you to kind of enjoy at your leisure and um, to be able to do again and again and again, because of course you get replays for this for, if for any reason you can't join us live. All right. So let's talk simplification. All right. So again, this is pulling from Year of Tranquility, and I'm pulling from page 114. But to give you a little context, and I write about this in the chapter, you know, what is simplification? Like, what does that actually mean or look like to me? And how has it transpired over the past many years? Now, many of you have been around for a while, and you know that I had a yoga studio that I founded in my living room, and then grew over 18 years and then sold in 2017. Now, when this book came out, I had just recently sold it. But, you know, I talk about kind of a period in the, in my kind of studio time where I came across a book called The Joy of Less, A Minimalist Living Guide by Francine J. And I share a little bit about what I read in the book and the kind of transformations or changes that happened from there. So I'll just read you a little piece on this, which will give a little context around the simplification five tips. So toward the end of her book, Jay writes, with minimalist living comes freedom. Who doesn't want a little freedom, right? Comes freedom, freedom from debt, from clutter, and from the rat race. Each extraneous thing eliminated from your life, be it an unused item, unnecessary purchase, or unfulfilling task. 
like saying yes to something you don't want to say yes to, feels like a weight lifted off your shoulders. You'll have fewer errands to run and less to pay for, shop for, clean, maintain, and insure. She goes on to say the same things happen when our lives are too full of commitments, of clutter, and of non-essential stuff. We don't have room for new experiences and miss out on chances to develop ourselves and deepen our relationships. Being minimalists, or you could think of just simplifying, helps us remedy this. By purging the excess from our homes, our schedules, our minds, we empty our cups, giving us infinite capacity for life, love, hopes, dreams, and copious amounts of joy. Who doesn't want that, right? So I go on to write a little bit about having a life too full really resonated with me. For years, I'd added more to my plate, things, commitments, to-dos, and I felt the weight. After reading this book, Losing My Grandma, and doing some soul searching, I removed myself from day-to-day operations of my two yoga studios. I stopped going to Target and Target just for fun. I took down the vintage items that were on display in my home and donated them. I had tons of vintage dresses just like hung and strewn about my house. I stopped selling vintage and reclaimed items on Etsy and my clothing line website. And I gave away many items stored in my closet, such as clothing, a leopard print rug, which I actually kind of miss, um, a chandelier, and two sewing machines, which I was not using. So while I still have a book buying problem, I've returned to Kindle to lessen the influx of books and have been surrendering many to Goodwill and friends. And I also leave them in the little libraries, you know, the little tiny libraries that people set up outside their home. And I still enjoy a romp through a department store, although it's now limited to once or twice a year. And actually, you know, whenever I wrote that, that was true. I rarely, I don't even know the last time I was in a department store. I think I have been to Target maybe twice during the pandemic. But yeah, um, the last time was to get my booster shot. So because there was a CVS inside, I sold my two studios to free up time, energy, money and space. Each year, I do a few home purges and reorganize during the process. Unwanted items are passed along to a new loving caretaker. And I think I've mentioned this to you all, and I plan to write a blog post about my big D clutter that I did in August, where I really do feel like I probably got rid of about 25%, maybe 20% of my stuff. The funny thing is, is I think another 25% could go. Um, And again, like just looking around my desk, it's filled with books and paperwork and (laughs) candles, right? It's like, I don't need all this. So I write, to lessen my waste, I skip plastic straws, utensils, and bags. Instead, I tote a fork, cloth napkin, a metal straw in my handbag, and bring a reusable bag to the store. I'm less trigger happy to purchase things online, although I wrote this before having a problem with Instagram ads. Um, Instead, I try to focus on experiences and items that will enhance my lifestyle, such as theater tickets or a bouquet of cut flowers. I also set up mint.com to check my spending habits. Way too much on candles, I write, and that continued, particularly through the pandemic and budgets. Although I'm far from perfect, I'm working toward living a more minimalist lifestyle through these daily actions, coupled with bigger shifts, such as letting go of a business I created 18 years ago. There's so much more to be done, but similar to our year's dreams, I think of it as one tiny micro movement at a time. Okay, so That was just a little piece from the chapter on minimalism where these five tips of simplification fall into. So let's start with number one. And I will say this whole concept of these five tips, and I mean, we could come up with 40 more, right? But is identifying what's important to you and eliminating the rest, which I think is really happy to, or really helpful too, as we think about the holiday season, right? How much do we do because we think we should do versus what we want to do? So number one, limit media consumption. And this is really helpful as we think about simplification. So, and when I say media consumption, it's not just like news or even just social media or TV shows. It's kind of like all the above. So according to the New York Times, Americans spend five hours watching TV and Entrepreneur notes that another two hours is spent on social media daily. So that's like seven hours, right, of media consumption. Now, some people have this stuff kind of on in the background or what have you. 
But, you know, I think particularly during the pandemic, the the constant influx of media, and particularly right now with the new variant Omicron, it's kind of like, oh my goodness, right? It can be really jarring. And I'm not saying put your head in the sand by any means, but I will say a media detox from time to time can be really, really helpful. And if you find it being more harmful than helpful to your mental health, then definitely taking a step back less time on news programs, et cetera. Like, can you get, you know, a daily digest versus every five minutes breaking news? Number two is establish routines. So housework, grocery shopping, bill payment, meals, morning and evening rituals, bathing and travel prep, right? So those are just some ideas of some routines that can be set up versus, you know, wearing those multiple hats and jumping from thing to thing, as we talked about in last week's podcast, you know, to really batch our things that we need to do and the hats that we wear. Number three is create space on your desk, in your life, in your schedule, in your handbag. Anyone have like so many random things in their handbag and in your mind. So shed what's training you, whether that's relationships, commitments, or things. Number four, reflect. So make a list of what you value most right now. Make sure they're getting time and space in your planner and in your day-to-day. So this really comes down a lot of thinking about our values, right? Are our values aligning with our day-to-day? Is what's important to you showing up on your schedule? This is something that we really kind of will be working with in the Coterie in 2022. Because it's not so much of like, oh, let's have a morning and evening routine. It's like, okay, let's do that and then make sure that our daily actions are moving us in a direction that feels authentic and nourishing to us. Number five, contribute. Volunteer, donate, raise awareness, support your favorite causes, host awareness raising events, and be of service. You guys, I have to tell you about the most exciting um, nonprofit that I found over the weekend. So I've been looking for a new organization to plant trees through because as you may know, Every uh, clothing item that's purchased, um, order is, I should say, that I plant a tree for it. And I do this at the end of the year, just going through and figuring out how many packages were shipped. And then I in turn do the donation. Well, you know, I was just looking through because I wanted a new organization where I could really choose like the location because the organization I was working with in the past, you could, and then they narrowed it down to one continent. I want it to go to the Borneo area to help with the orangutans. Anyway, so I came across Borneo Orangutan Survival USA, and because I think they have a few different ones, and I found that they plant trees for reforestation to help the orangutans. I was like, oh my gosh, this is everything. And they even freaking have a retreat there, a retreat center where there's yoga, uh, mindfulness. You get to be with the um, orangutans and you get to plant trees, like physically plant trees while you're there. So I have signed up to learn more about that. I'm very excited. Um, But so this is a really great organization that I just found from doing a little bit of digging. And so I made a donation in honor of Miss Bell Starr. So for you thinking about really from a contribution perspective, how can you simplify down into really what is most meaningful to you, right? So these are just my kind of thoughts on a little bit of basic simplification to help us from a minimalist perspective. So number one, limiting media consumption, I think particularly now because we're being inundated with all the information about this new variant. Not that it isn't important. It is important. But do you have to read about it like every 10 minutes, right? Um, Number two, establishing routines. What are some routines that you could pull together for this last month of the year, right? I can't believe we only have four weeks left almost. Four, I guess we have five, including this week, right? But it's just like, oh my goodness, it is wrapping up. But we still have one twelfth of a year left. So just thinking about what are some routines that you may want to get into, start cultivating that would help carry you into 2022 and help your holidays go smoother. Number three, creating space. As you look around in your home, in your life, on your, in your planner, um, on that schedule, what can you do to find a little bit of open space? Can you? 
Number four is reflecting, you know, and just really we're going to do a bit of this, of course, during Saturday's holiday pop-up, which again, I hope you will be there. Can't wait to see you and connect. But, you know, really, really just noticing, like, what is it that is most important to me? Like, what are my core things? You know, I made a list, right, where it was like writing my memoir, being with my clients, being with my family, ballet. Um, I'm trying to think, what were the others that were just like top, you know, I think just kind of relationships in general, right? My partner, um, my friends, things in my community, things along those lines. You know, so asking yourself, like, are these showing up and am I making time for these in my day-to-day schedule? And then last but not least, of course, contribute. You may be like, well, how does that help with simplification? There's just something about whenever, you know, as that Francine J quote talks about, whenever you have less to ensure, to shop for, you know, et cetera, it's like you have more space to then in turn, you know, use some of your resources for what you really value, like reforestation um, in Borneo for the orangutans, just an example. All right. And I'll actually put a link to their website in the show notes for anyone else who might be interested and obsessed with these beautiful little orange creatures. So thank you. You know, as always, of course, thank you for tuning in. Again, I cannot wait to see you on Saturday. And, you know, you can find a link to sign up for that, obviously, over in the show notes for this episode, which is slash 569, or, you know, over on the website, KimberlyWilson.com, and also for the virtual retreat and the wait list for the annual program, The Coterie. And I chose The Coterie as the name because The Coterie is like, and, you know, a group, like a Hey, uh, hey, it's French. <laughs> and I thought it kind of went well with Tranquility, Tranquility Coterie. But also it's like, you know, an inner circle of people. And I think of it as this inner circle of people who are really honed in on finding more tranquility in their day to day, coming together, supporting each other and being part of a group. You know, but also, you know, some people like to just kind of hang out on the periphery. Like, you know, they join everything, but yet they're not necessarily like, super social. And that's totally fine too. So just knowing that you can have this community in whatever way resonates most with your personality. Because I do think we have quite a few highly sensitive people in my groups. And um, I love you and I respect you because I'm one of you. (laughs) And, um, you know, just a final reminder. To sign up for Love Notes, I'll be getting another one out this week, and that's at KimberlyWilson.com slash Love Notes, and these are regular offerings where I send invites, inspiration, and more. Also, there's a link to browse my six books and planner if you're looking for a new planner for 2022. And then there's ways to follow along on Instagram and YouTube. I'm actually going to be removing Facebook because I will, um, and when I say it, I mean from the show notes, because I'm also going to be removing it um, from Facebook in the new year. So um, finally, if you have a moment to share a review of the show on Apple Podcasts or any of my books on Amazon or Goodreads, I would be so, so grateful. I always appreciate kind of hearing what you have to say. And also, if you have any requests for topics or anything that you would find incredibly valuable to you, particularly this time of year, and also with where you may be kind of mentally, physically, emotionally. All right. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. And I hope you have a delicious, delightful week ahead. Thank you.